Okay, so welcome back guys. So in this video then we'll just talk about the composite data types. Now we actually did talk about one last time which was arrays, right? So for people that don't know composite data types, well there'll be data types that can be composed, right? Or, you know, kind of comprised um, of, you know, uh, basically more than one value. And in some cases also, you know, more than one different data type. So if, if we just remember, right, let's have a quick recap. So the six primitives. Um, now, I mean, well, for A level, there's six, right? For IG, there's only five. So the ones you need, right, there's going to be integer. Okay, there's also real. Um, all right, we've also got the char, right, character. Uh, then there's going to be string, right, and also Boolean. Now, for IG, these will be the only ones you need to know, right? Whereas for A level, there's also going to be date as well. Now, the reason that these are called um, kind of primitives is because, well, basically they can just have one value. So for example, an integer, uh, I mean, obviously right here, I've not declared it, but right, let's imagine I've declared X. For example, like we can only go maybe, yeah, uh, well, let's assign four to X. So here there's just one value. Um, we couldn't say X is, you know, four, five, six, right? Uh, you know, we couldn't have multiple values like this. Um, Whereas in contrast, composite data types, while well, they you know they can have multiple values, so we actually looked at arrays last time. Um, however, I, I guess I made that a separate video just because, uh, well, you know, arrays they're kind of more of a, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't necessarily want to say more important, but I mean they, they're kind of asked about more right compared to say records or enums or sets. All right, so yeah, they're, they're just more common in the syllabus basically. Um, yeah, more common in the, uh, you know, exam papers. Um, and I will actually say, right, these composite data types here, so again, record, enums, and sets, right, these are actually only for A-level. So anyone that's doing IG, I mean, well, if you want, you can watch this video, but, you know, if you're only focusing on the exam, then, I mean, honestly, you can just skip. Um, yeah, because, again, none of these threes, uh, none of these three things are included in the IG syllabus. All right, only for A-level and even sets okay this is only being included in the new syllabus um so i think yeah this is from like 2023 right so just this year um all right so i guess um yeah let's just get started then right so if, if we look at the first one records now you can think of a record um i mean similar to a database where rather than just wanting to store kind of like one field right, or maybe one attribute right we can actually store you know multiple attributes um, kind of, you know, about the same record, basically. Um, so in a database, you know, we would call this person, well, this would be a relation, right? And then, yeah, each relation is going to have, you know, multiple fields. So it's, it's just the same concept. Um, and, you, you know, we have seen how we can do this uh, using kind of like, I mean, let's say multiple 1D arrays, right? But then these would have to be synchronized. Um, so, for example, you could have a 1D array of strings, you know, representing like the person's name. And then you have another 1D array uh, of integers, right, just representing their age. But the problem with this, you know, then you have two separate arrays. Uh, if you want to sort them, you have to sort both of them. Uh, you know, likewise for searching, you have to kind of search one and then find the corresponding position, um, you know, in the other one. All right, so it's just going to get quite complex. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of, uh, I guess a record, it just keeps the data organized, right? Because it, it keeps it organized as one object right? or yeah, one record. Uh, so let's just look at how we can make this. So first then, I mean, rather than declare, we're going to say type. Um, and I guess this is kind of just saying the template of the record, right? So then we're going to say, uh, basically the identifier right? or the record name. So this is going to be person. Um, and then I'm just going to get end type, right? Because, yeah, just so I don't forget again. Right, and then inside here, this is where we declare, like, basically the different data types that we want. Um, yeah, the different identifiers. So let's say the person, well, each person is going to have a name. And, yeah, probably you can guess that's going to be a string. Right, we're also going to say they're going to have an age, right? That's going to be an integer. Um, and it, in fact, okay, at the moment, let, okay, let's just try with this, right? And we'll just test it. So in order to create a person, then we're just going to go to Claire. And I think I'm just going to call them Sam. All right. And then we'll say Sam is going to be of type of person. So, I mean, no, I mean, usually, you know, we would say of type string or something. 
right? But here, since we've you know created this kind of custom type, right? Custom data type or composite data type, um, then yeah, we can actually use this, you know, what we've created, right? And then what we're going to do uh, in order to actually access the kind of member or right, all the attribute, right? Then we can just use the dot. So if we go Sam dot name, um, and yeah, I mean here it does you know tell us again it's going to be a string, uh, and then what we can do we can just assign this. So yeah, this can just be Sam. Uh, let's say. Uh, let's say age, all right, this can be maybe 16, um, because in a minute we'll set a sound, all right, and we're going to say they're going to be a student. So, I mean, we can actually test that. So if we just go output, and let's say, yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe just say, right, Sam, uh, right, Sam dot name, right, and then we'll just say is, and let's say Sam dot age, uh, and then just say, yeah, maybe years old, like this. All right, so this should just say Sam is 16 years old. And yeah, okay, so we see this is working. Now, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create multiple people. So it would be quite nice, you know, rather than just having an output statement like this, if we actually make a procedure that can, you know, take in a person as a parameter, um, and then, yeah, just kind of output the relevant details. So what we'll do, right, let's just go procedure. Um, and yeah, maybe we can just say like output person or maybe output person details, right? And then here as the parameter, well, let's just call this P and then this is going to be of type person. Um, and in fact, right, let's just do this here. Uh, right, yeah, let, then let's just end procedure. Right now, what we're going to do, um, you know, rather than calling Sam, because, well, of course, this will work for Sam, but if we go another person, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe like you say Tony or Terry, right? You know, they can be a teacher. Uh, well, then, you know, it's not going to work for them, right? Because, well, we've kind of hard coded this Sam variable. So what we want to do, well, we just want to use the parameter here. All right, so p.name. Um, and in fact, I think I'm just going to output it slightly differently. Um, yeah, or I, I guess, I mean, this is also okay. Uh, okay, okay, actually, no, I'm just going to output it like this. Because in a minute we're going to output, you know, grades and things. Uh, yeah, they're subjects, they're grades, and you know, there's going to be a lot of detail. So yeah, I'm just going to put things on different lines. Um, all right, and let's go your yeah, and like this, uh, and then right, let's just delete that. Uh, let's go output. Uh, all right, and then here let's just go age, and let's go and p dot age. All right, and yeah, if if we just call this here. So let's go call, all right, then output person details, and here we'll just go Sam. All right, and then, yeah, let's test this works. And yeah, okay, so we see this works. Right, so now what we wanna do, um, well, we can look at how we can create an enum. So basically, well, I mean, it's called an enum. Uh, I think the actual words, yeah, I mean, you can call it kind of like enumerated, um, or yeah, maybe like enumerable like this. So, I mean, if you notice, right, well, you actually see kind of, I mean, basically number, right? So num, number. Um, and the reason it's called this is because, uh, well, each, like, basically each of the values is also going to be mapped to a number. So, I mean, well, let, let's just create it, then we can see an example. Uh, right, so, yeah, let, let's just make it here. Uh, so here we're just going to say type, all right? Uh, then we're just going to say, okay, yeah, let's do roll like this. Um, right, and then we're just going to go equals. Okay, so here the syntax is a little bit different, right? And then inside the brackets, this is where we have the different values. So, right, let's say you can have well, the role can be a student, right? Also, there can be a teacher, and also a head teacher. Um, so, the, I mean, kind of the reason for doing this basically is uh, we're kind of just like whitelisting the values, um, because for example. Like imagine, for example, here, if we just went declare and let's say roll and then say this is a string. Now we could have a situation where someone goes, uh, maybe what Sam dot roll. And, you know, for example, you say student. Now someone else might do it. Uh, and then maybe you have another person. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of another name beginning with S. Uh, yeah, and then maybe like Sonny or something. Uh, someone else might do this where you know they have a big s now in this case you know student with a small s is going to be different to student with a big s so if you were doing some sort of comparison right checking their equal 
well, yeah, you know, these are going to be different. Um, you can also have a situation where maybe someone types, you know, for, for example, pupil or something, right? Because, I mean, pupil means the same as student. Uh, but, you know, again, of course, because they're using different words, right, different strings, um, then, yeah, if you check, you know, if, if you kind of check, right, if this student is equal to this pupil, uh, right, then, of course, it, you know, it's, it's going to say false. Um, and I, I think for some like uh, for things like subjects, this can get even worse because, I mean, let's say, you know, computer science. Well, some people call it computer science. Some people call it CS. Some people call it, you know, ICT computing. Right. There, there's obviously many different names for it. Um, and yet different, you know, capital, uh, capitalizations and things. Right. So this is where if we create an enum like this, basically, you know, we're only giving them three allowed values. Um, and you know, if if they try anything else, well then, yeah, it's, it's just going to give them an error, basically. Um, right. I mean, so yeah. I mean, I mean, let's just create this. So I'll just delete this for a second. Uh, and then what we're going to say this role. Well, this is going to be of type role. Okay, because yeah, that's the enum we've just created. Uh, now I'm just going to say here. So this one we're going to say role, and then it's dot student. All right. So we actually need the name of the enum. Um, and then we say the actual type, all right? So for example, we, uh, we couldn't go student like this, right? It, yeah, uh, basically it has to be role .student. Um And then right I mean, here, I'm just gonna output this. However, you will actually notice, and this is a little bit annoying, uh, but right, let's try role, uh, right? And then let's go, yeah, p.role. Now this will actually be a number because what we're saying, well, student, this is basically like element one, um, or kind of yeah, value one, right? Teacher, this is value two, and then head teacher, this is value three. Now we'll see in a minute where this can actually have some advantages. Uh, because for example, you know, we can order them in terms of importance, uh, or maybe you know, in terms of like privileges, or yeah, I mean, like for example, if we have say months, right? So if this here is months, uh, or maybe month, right? Of course we can go, you know, like January, February, March, and then what we can do is we can then do something like this, where we say uh, maybe if current month, all right? And obviously we would have had to have declared this, you know, somewhere else. Uh, we could say maybe yeah, if current month equals to month, uh, yeah, month dot December or something, all right? So obviously here we can then check if this is the current month. Uh, we could also do maybe something like this, uh, where we say, where we say, yeah, if the current month is greater than you know month dot June, all right. So this is another advantage of enums. Uh, the first advantage is well, it's going to be a whitelist, so it's only going to let us have you know these three possible values, um, and then the second advantage, well, because we see you know I mean it's literally called enum, right? So uh, they're, they're going to be kind of numbered. All right, so yeah, because you know, because they're just numbers, um, then we can actually do you know operators like this, right? So checking yeah, equal, greater than, less than, uh, you know, of course yeah, not equal. Um, and I mean to be honest, right, we can even add them as well, right? Yeah, add them, multiply them, um, you know, whatever. All right, so anyway, actually, let's just undo some of this because yeah, I've made a few changes there when demonstrating. Uh, right, okay, and then here, so just p dot roll. So this should just output one. Um, yeah, so we say role one, right, which is going to be a student. Now let's actually create a function which is going to map the actual kind of role number, right, with the actual string. Now, you know, in, in some programming languages, um, I think for example Java, you know, they, they have syntax like this, where you can say sort of student equals one. Uh, and then basically, I think, yeah, I think you can choose whether to output either the string, right, or to output the number. Um, but I, I guess, yeah, I mean, well, pseudocode's a little bit simpler, right? So we'll just make a function to do it. Uh, so let's say this can be maybe roll, yeah, I know, roll enum to string or something. So here then we think, well, this is going to take a roll. So let's just call this R, uh, right? That's going to be roll. And then what we want to return is, well, you know, if the roll is one, right, then it should return the string student. Um, so yeah, let's say this. Okay, that's going to be returns, and then this should be string. Right, end function. Now, for here, we could use an if statement, but I think in this case, you know, it's, it's actually quite, uh, maybe, yeah, quite convenient just to use a case, 
right? Because of course we could have like many of these. Um, yeah, and I think a case is actually going to be a bit quicker, right? Sometimes, uh, yeah, just because you know the way it works. Uh, right, so here then we say well case of R. Right again, let's just have end case, um, and then what we can do, uh, let's say one. Right, so one then we're just going to return uh, return student. Uh, in fact, yeah, actually let let me just copy these. Um, all right, and then if we say two and three, uh, and then just remember we also have otherwise. Right, so two we say this is going to be a teacher, and three this can just be the heads. Okay, head teacher. Um, and I guess otherwise we can, I mean, maybe just an empty string or maybe say invalid role, right? Some error message like this. Um, and yeah, I mean, let's just call this here. So we're going to say role enum to string. Right, and now hopefully this should now say, you know, role student. Uh, yeah, okay, so we see this works. Um, now let's actually try giving it an invalid value. So let's say. Uh, I mean, I don't know, like maybe parent or something. All right, so obviously this is invalid, so this should give us an error. Um, yeah, I mean, it, again, right, it's honestly, it's not the best error message, to be honest. Um, but I mean, it does give us the error message, and yeah, I mean, it, it does give us the line. All right, so I mean, probably I'll look to, you know, improve this error message at some point. Uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, if we have that, I think that's fine. Uh, right then probably we can then move on to this array of grades um, yeah so if we go here right let's go declare uh, then we'll say grade or in fact maybe grades and let's say here this is going to be an array right the dimensions will just be two um, and then let, let's say this is going to be of grade all right and then this grade this is going to be another you know custom data type right or composite data type um, and I guess well, in this instance, right, this will be a record uh, because what we want, uh, yeah, I think I, okay, okay here we go. Um, yeah, so we say the grade, well, this is going to have subject and score, all right. And uh, I mean, if you've done databases, you can see, I mean, this almost looks like a schema, right, where we're saying, well, this is the relation. And yeah, you know, these would be the fields, right, all the attributes. Um, so let's just say here type and this will be grade. Uh, right then, yeah, let's just go end type like this. And what do we say? Right, so we want subject. Um, so the subject, let's say that can be a string. Um, and, and now honestly, right, subject, this, I mean, this could also be an enum. Uh, however, I'm going to do it just as a string. Um, just because, well, honestly, like, I, you know, I don't want to have to do this again, right? It's going to take too long. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, right, this can also be a. Uh, uh, okay, okay I mean, all right. So actually, I, I think we should probably just do it, to be honest. I think it won't take that long. Um, right, so let's say that can be subject. Um, and let's say this one, uh, yeah, let's say score, right? And then this can also be of type score. So this will be another enum. So I'm just going to copy the score. Uh, right, so let's say type score. And then this one we think, well, this will just be the grade basically, right, their score. Now, you might think, you know, why don't I go, uh, I mean, let's just do it here. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, yeah, you might think, why don't, you know, why don't I go say A star, you know, A, B, right, you know, in this order. Now, I mean, you know, we can do that. But the problem with this, well here, this A star is going to be 1, right? This A is going to be 2, this B is going to be 3. So if, for example, we want to check, uh, well, uh, let's say, you know, did a student get like higher than a B or higher than a C? Well, in that case, we would actually be doing, uh, I mean, let's say kind of like uh, maybe, you know, student score. Um, and then we would actually have to check if that is less than, say, score dot C. Right, because let's say, for example, they get an A. Well, A is going to be two. You know, C is going to be four. Right, so we're actually saying, yes, yeah, student score is less than scored or C, which I mean that, I mean you know, it, it does work, but I guess the logic is kind of reversed, um, because obviously if we say, well, score is less than, that sounds like it's a bad score. Uh, whereas, yeah, if if we do this order, well, then we say right, the lower scores are going to have you know lower values like one. Right, and then yeah, the highest scores, well, they're going to have, you know, seven, eight, right, they're going to be higher. 
Um, so yeah, I'm, let's just kind of reverse the order. Uh, so I think we can go U, uh, then probably F, uh, right then it's going to be E, then D, C, B, A, and yeah, let's say A star. Um, and of course, you know, we, we can't go A star like this, right, because, well, this is the multiplication symbol. So yeah, let's just go A star, right, typing it. Um, right, and then let's also say subject, and let's go type subject. Uh, okay, that's annoying, it did that. Uh, and to be honest, I, I'm probably only going to do two. Uh, let's just say maths and also computer science and or let's also say physics um, and then I'm actually just going to copy this right because basically we just need the same uh, so what we will do let's say subject uh, yeah okay subject enum to string right we can call this s right this will be yeah of type subject um, and then here let's call this s uh, and then yeah we've only got right maths computer science physics uh, right, so the first one there is, well, just maths. Um, and, you know, th this is the thing with maths, right? Because, well, you know, we could call it maths. Uh, I guess in America, right, they would just call it math. Uh, you know, some people, they call it, you know, mathematics. Right, that, again, there's obviously lots of different ways. Um, so this is why it's good to use an enum. Right now, let's say the next one could be computer science. All right, and then, yeah, finally, let's just go physics. Um, and yeah, again, just like invalid subject. All right, so I think that should just work. Um, yeah, all right, so, okay, so I think this is fine. Right, and then what we can do to test this, um, let's just try, let's go SAM, and then we can go dot grades, uh, because if we look, right, this grades is then this array, right? But the problem is this grades is gonna be, well, type grade. Um, and I mean, actually, we do need to specify the index as well. So let's just try maybe index one. Um, right, so then again, e like each of these is going to be of type grade. So then we need to go, you know, dot subject or dot score. Uh, so right here we go. So let's go dot subject. Um, and right, that can then be, yeah, I mean, uh, let's just say maths, I guess. Right, so let's say subject dot maths. Um, right, let's just copy this, and this one is then just going to be score, um, and then here let's go score, and yeah, I mean I think we can just say a. All right, and uh, I mean just to prove this is a number, I mean you can actually see here, right? It says yeah equals seven. Um, if, if I just move that, um, whereas for example if I say u, right, then we say yeah u is going to be one, right? So th this is why we can compare them, right? Because that yeah they uh, they've got an associated number basically. Um, Right, and I think, yeah, I think that's okay. Now, let's just try and output this. Um, and, yeah, I mean, okay, let, let's also do the other one, right, because otherwise we'll just get undefined. Uh, and let's say here this can be maybe computer science, and, yeah, I mean, let's say A star, right? Uh, I think if, you know, if they're using Pseudocode Pro, then, yeah, they, they can get an A star. Um, all right, so here then, I mean, since we've got an array, well, you think we can just loop through this. Uh, so let's say four, and let's go n. Um, I mean, all we could, I mean, we could call it subject or yes, yeah, subject number, but I think n is fine. Right, this is going to start at one. Right, and then, I mean, again, we could just say two, but I'm just going to say, well, the length of grades, because if, for example, someone says, well, four subjects, um, yeah, then of course we would have to change it, you know, here in the for loop. Right, whereas if we use length, well, if they change the length of the array, you know, the, I mean, this is going to calculate, uh, you know, the new length basically. Um, right, so this is going to be p dot grades, um, and yeah, of course, you, you know, you have to remember you need this p dot, right? If if you just try grades, well, that's not going to work. Uh, right, okay, and then again, let's just do next n, um, and I think here let's just go output. Uh, right, and then what are we going to output? Let's output probably the subject name and then the score. So I think this one we created, yeah, this subject enum to string. Right, and then that is going to be, okay, P, yeah, P grades, and then this will be index N, right, because again, we've got, you know, grade one, grade two. Um, right, and then here we need to remember this is the subject. All right, then we should be able to go and like this. Um, yeah, and now, 
yeah, see, you, you know, the, the problem is we're, we're going to have to do this again for the enum, right? Which, yeah, this is why it's a little bit annoying uh, when we actually, you know, can't really output this as a string. Like, although I will say, I mean, I've actually never really seen them ask about enums in an exam, like, at, at least not in a question like this. Uh, may, maybe they might ask a two mark, you know, simple question, um, you know, about maybe like sort of using two enums to compare or something. But yeah, I've, I've never seen it like this where, you know, they, they would want you to use an enum, uh, you know, in sort of a complex question, really. Um, but all right, so well, let, let's just copy this. Uh, and let's say this can be, I guess, grade or score, probably. All right, this is going to be score. Uh, right, and then let's just delete that. Um, and I think there's about eight, maybe. Uh, right, so let's try, yeah, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so I think this one is going to be U, uh, this one is going to be F, uh, this one is going to be E, right, D, C, B, A. Um, all right, and then, yeah, we can just delete this. Uh, and then here, let's go, like, invalid score. Um, right, okay, so then we can go, well, this is score enum to string. Uh, and then this is going to be, yeah, let's just move this across a little bit. Uh, right, this is going to be p.grades. Um, again, you know, this is the same thing. All right, then we just go score like this. Uh, and I think, yeah, I, mean, I think that should work. I mean, let's just try. Uh, yeah, okay, so we see, right, maths A and computer science A. Now, I'm also going to output just here like this. And yeah, th this is another little bug right with the editor. Um, I'm not really sure why it does this, where sometimes, uh, it, you know, if, if the kind of word wraps or yeah, if the line wraps around, uh, yeah, then we just get this gap here, which is kind of annoying. Um, so I think I'm just going to stop the video and then just, uh, yeah, fix this. Right, so I think for me, you know, just kind of uh, minimizing then, yeah, maximizing again, right, just leaving the code as uh, um, basically that seemed to fix it. Uh, but anyway, right, so let's say here, let's say we want to also output grades, um, or at least we want to output the string grades. Yeah, okay, I mean, I think, yeah, okay, let's let's try something like this, maybe grades. Uh, right, I'm also just going to output this. Um, and to be honest, I'm probably just going to change this. So I'm going to say, yeah, let, let's just change how this looks. So, for example, I, I want to say like student Sam, and then it'd be you know teacher Terry, or yeah maybe head teacher Harry, you know whatever. Um, so here then let's have the yeah that's going to be the role. All right then let's just have uh, yeah space. Right and then yeah then here let's just go the name. Um, right and then here let's just have the hyphens like this, right just to give it a nice kind of heading. And then I'm actually just going to output just a new line just at the end, um, just so we can separate right when we have multiple people. Uh, and I think, yeah, I mean that should be okay. Um, and I mean, may maybe here I'll just indent it a little bit more, all right? Just just to make it a bit easier to see. So maybe just have like three like that. Uh, yeah, see how that looks. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess maybe that's too much. Um, all right, I mean, I, I think, yeah, that, that seems okay, to be honest. Uh, right, so, yeah, now we've got that. Um, let's say... Yeah, I, I mean, so, like, if we just want to test this, um, and in fact, let's also make a function to actually set these, right? Or, yeah, we'll make a procedure to set these. So I'm just going to copy this. Uh, and let's call this... So what do we say? Yeah, set grade. Um, okay, so all right, we'll, we'll try this. So let's go here, procedure. All uh, right, then we're going to say set grade. Um, right, and so if we think about this, well, the grade, it needs a subject, right? It is, yeah, also going to need a score. So let's say here, subject, and this is going to be of type subject. All uh, right, then we also have score, which, well, again, that's going to be of type score. Uh, right, let's go for end procedure, right, and actually here we're also going to need the person, right, because, yeah, there can be multiple different people. Uh, right, so let's just say, yeah, P, I guess, right, and then that's going to be of type person. 
Now the thing to note here is that really this P, right, this also has to be by ref because what we're going to do, well, we're going to update this. So if we were just using, well, if we were using nothing, right, so the default is going to be by val, right, so if we use nothing, it's going to be by val. Now the problem with this again, well, this will copy this person um, and then it's only going to change the copy, right, so it's not going to change the actual original data. Um, now, again, to be honest, in, in exams, you know, they don't often use by reference that much because what they'll say is they'll say, well, just use the global variables uh, because maybe they'll just have like one array, for example, right? But because here, since we're creating, you know, multiple students, well, we can't really use the global variable because then we'd have to go, you know, Sam dot grades, you know, dot whatever. Um, but, you know, then if we have a new person, uh, yeah, I don't know, you know, some other student, you know, beginning with S, um, yeah, then we're not, you know, well, then, of course, we'd have to use their name. So, yeah, that's not going to be possible um, because, well, we, would, you know, we would need a different procedure for every single student in that case. Uh, yeah, which kind of like defeats the whole purpose of having uh, modules. Um, right, so I'm mean, here then, yeah, this has to be by ref because we're actually updating this. Um, I mean, let, let's actually look at this enum. So here we say, well, basically only students are going to have grades, right? Uh, I mean, I guess you would say a teacher could have a grade, you know, if they're a good teacher, bad teacher. Um, yeah, maybe head teacher too. But I mean, yeah, let's say in our example, um, yeah, like only students are going to have grades. Right, so this is where we can actually use these enums. Uh, yeah, this is where we can use, you know, these enums, right, these different roles. Right, so what we'll do is we'll say if, uh, then we say if p dot role, and we'll just check that that is equal to role dot student. Um, and then if it is, well, you know, then we can actually update the grade. Right, let's say else. Uh, so let's say out, uh, okay, output. Right, and then let's say like, well, we'll say the name. So basically, yeah, name is not a student, for example. So we'll say p dot name, right, is not a student. Um, in fact, yeah, let's go like this. Uh, and then, right, so here, if if it is, uh, right, I just copied that. So let's just, uh, yeah, let's just indent this. Hang on. Um, right, I mean, so here, then we can just go p.grades. Uh, right, let's subject. Okay, then this is just going to be subject. Right, and then this one is just going to be score. Right, and here, if we're looking at this, I guess this also needs an index number. So we can also go like this, and let's say this can be, yeah, I guess just index, right, that can be integer. Um, and right here we'll say index, and yeah, here we will also say index. Now, this will probably give us a little bit of an error because what it will say, uh, well, I mean, let's, yeah, let's try and demonstrate. Uh, let's say if we go call, right, then set grade. Uh, right, so here the person is gonna be Sam, let's say the index is one. I uh, write these subjects that can be subject dot I think maths we said and right this is score dot a um, now basically right if we use by ref here well this means that you know you know the next one's also going to be by ref now the problem is if we kind of have a lit uh, well, a literal value like this right which basically means not a variable right so just a hard coded value um, well this can't be passed by reference Right, because I mean, what what by reference is doing really? Um, I mean, basically, it's passing a reference to the memory address. However, if this is just a hard coded value, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, basically, we don't really have kind of a memory a memory address that we can update, um, or yeah, I mean, it's not really a variable that we can update, basically. Right. So, I mean, what we can then do? Well, right, either we can make this a variable, um, so we just assign it here. Right, or we can just make these by val, um, because you know, right, the subject and the score we actually don't have to change. Right, you know, we're just using these to assign here. Um, right, so I think yeah, that should work. Uh, I mean, let, let's just run it again, and in fact, let's yeah, let's just copy this. Right, so here then we're just going to go uh, yeah, subject two. Right, this can then be. Uh, I mean, actually, I mean, let's try physics just to you know see if it changes here. Um, and I mean, let's say here, maybe they get a B. All right, let's test this. Uh, five arguments, but got four. So right, person, index. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay, did I just... Okay, alright, so it seems, yeah, I, I just missed this comma here. Um, right, and then, yeah, okay, so we see that this seems to work. Alright, now I'm just going to put it back to computer science, and yeah, let's go A star. Right, now, let's try and create another person, All right, then we can test if this works. So that's where we're testing, you know, if this kind of enum, right, if this enum checking is actually working. Uh, so what we can then do, yeah, I mean, let's say maybe like Tim. So, I mean, my, my logic is that while well, students begin with S, right, teachers begin with T, and yeah, head teachers begin with H. Um, because otherwise, if you have like 10 people, you know, it's going to get so confusing. Uh, although, although, well, although here we're only going to create three, right, one student, one teacher, one head teacher. Uh, right, so let's say here Tim, um, and okay, let's go Tim.name, right, that's just going to be Tim, uh, right, Tim.age, I mean, yeah, I guess they're a teacher, maybe 30, right, and then Tim uh, time, okay, Tim.role, and that can be, well, role.teacher. So let's say here if we try, for example, Tim, so here if we try to set a grade for Tim, Right, this should output this, right? So Tim is not a student. Um, so yeah, let's just try this. Um, yeah, okay, so here we get uh, Tim is not a student. And then you can also see here where right, we get this invalid subject and also invalid school. Uh, and the reason for that is because, well, basically we've not assigned, you know, subject one for Sam. Um, because yeah, of course this is Tim. So I mean, I think by default, this, uh, this will just be subject zero and school zero. And you know, of course, if we see here, well, yeah, there, there's no zero, right? There's yeah, there's no zero. Um, or I guess actually, it's yeah, these here. Um, yeah, all right. So I think that's working. So let's just undo it, go back. Right. So let's say the next one. Uh, then we want a procedure to actually show grades. Um, so I mean, here we have this output. Yeah, I guess output details. Uh, but let's say we want a procedure just to show grades. And the only people that can, you know, call this, or yeah, the only people that can access this, you know, show grade procedure, well, basically they have to be, you know, greater than or equal to a teacher. Um, so what that means, well, greater than, you know, either a teacher, right, or a head teacher. Because if we think, right, student has, you know, a value of one, right, teacher two, head teacher three. Um, so yeah, we can use this greater than or equal, right, which again, obviously that's an advantage of enums. Uh, right, so let, let's just have a go at this here, and yeah, I'm actually just going to do it, maybe here. Uh, right, so let's say show grade, or yeah, show grades. Um, right, so I think first this needs, uh, yeah, okay, let's say this also needs a password. Um, let's say plus correct password. All right, because it, again, if this is like, you know, a sort of a real system, right, if you want to see the student's grades, well, probably that's going to require, you know, the teacher to enter a password. Um, right, so let's actually add this here then. So let's go declare and we'll go password. And right, this is going to be a string. And I mean, let's, let's keep it simple. So let's say Sam, right, Sam.password. And this can just be uh, maybe Sam123. Right, and then let's say Tim, yeah, Tim.password. Um, right, let's just go Tim123. Because, yeah, obviously, otherwise I'm not going to remember. Uh, right, okay, so if we think about the parameters, well, first we need, uh, I mean, I, I want to say kind of like the admin, right? So basically, yeah, the person who's trying to access the grades. Um, so yeah, maybe let's just call this admin. Uh, right, then let's also have student. So this is the person, you know, we're trying to access the grades from. Um, and right, these are both going to be of type person. Uh, and I think, yeah, that's all we need. Because I think we can ask for the password inside here, right? That this should be input. Um, and I mean, that basically that's just good practice because you don't really want to do something like this. Uh, let's say, yeah, I guess maybe we can do it after here. Um, you wouldn't really want a function or, you know, procedure uh, signature where you have, right, this is going to be Tim, uh, that's going to be Sam. And then you wouldn't want to have, you know, like my super secret password or something. Um, because the problem is, you know, if, you, if you're passing around your password, like as a sort of parameter or, or as, as an argument to a module, um, you know, then of course it's going to be possible. Well, if someone can read your code, right, if they have the source code, well, they can directly see it. 
um, even if they don't have the source code, you know, they, they can kind of like disassemble it. Um, so basically going, you know, from the machine code, right, then there's programs that will try to go back, uh, you know, say well, to the assembly code, um, yeah, or even to a high level language. Um, so yeah, of course you, you never want to be passing around passwords, you know, sort of as arguments basically. All right, so what we're going to do then, let's go end procedure. And here, let's just check for the permissions. So let's say if, yeah, I mean, first of all, let's check admin. So we want to say if admin uh, dot role, and this should be greater than or equal to, well, the teacher basically. So yeah, this means teacher or head teacher is going to be valid. Uh, right, then let's go end if. Um, and again, let's just go else, or I'm going to have a warning. Uh, so just like we did before, so let's go output, and then we'll say admin. Uh, yeah, let's say admin name. Um, yeah, maybe say doesn't. Yeah, doesn't have required permissions. Uh, all right, so I think that should work. Right then, inside here. So then we want to check for the password. Um, or, or in fact, okay, I mean, let's also check that they're a student as well. So we, maybe we can do this first. Uh, so let's say if, so we'll say student.roll. Uh, I mean, okay, let's say equal student. Or yeah, okay, roll.student. Right, and then what we'll do, so we'll put this inside the if statement. Right, so this means if it's valid, well, then we can do the next check. All right, uh, okay. However, yeah, if, if, it's, well, if it's not valid, you know, if they're not a student, um, right, then let's just go output. Uh, and then we will say, right, student.name. Um, and the thing is, you know, even though I've called it student, well, this could be a teacher, right? I mean, th th this is just the kind of parameter. Um, because, yeah, obviously, well, I, you know, uh, if it's correct, well, this person should be kind of an admin, right? So teacher or head teacher. Uh, and, yeah, this person should be a student. Um, but, yeah, if they pass in the wrong parameters, right, then it's, yeah, you know, they're, they're not going to have the correct roles. Uh, so let's say, I mean, yeah, let's say it is not a student. Uh, you know, or hence they have no grades or something. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, right, so here, let's go end if. Um, yeah, and then so what do we want to do in here? So here then, uh, right, so if they are a teacher, well, yeah, if they're greater than or equal to a teacher, right, then we just want to check the password. Uh, so then what we can do, let's say output. Yeah, I think I've, I've done that about five times now, the, the wrong one. Uh, right, let's say please enter your password. Um, right, then let's just go input. Um, okay, and let's go... Yeah, I mean, let's just declare this, maybe user, I oh know, yeah, user input. Right, that's going to be a string. And here, let's go user input. Uh, and then, well, you just think we need to just check. So let's go if user input uh, is equal to the admin dot password. Um, right, I mean, here is obviously okay. Right, so here, here then we just want to loop through and show the grades. Uh, although, yeah, let's do that in a minute. Uh, let's say here, right, this can be... So yeah, times six, uh, right? This can just be, I mean, yeah, let's say like invalid password, right? Just a simple error message. Now, I think here we've, I mean, we've already got this code to be honest. Um, if we go, yeah, here, right? Although, I mean, let's, let's try it again, right? You know, just in case you've forgotten how we can do this. So first, uh, well, if, if we think uh, the grades here, well, this is gonna be, uh, I mean, basically an array, right? With, you know, two grades. Um, so first what we want to do, let's say n, right, that can be 1, and then let's go 2, and this will be the length of, yeah, student.grades. Uh, next, right, and then inside here, uh, right, what we then want to do, let's just go output. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think, again, we can just do the same format, right, so we'll just go subject and then I kind of score like this. Uh, so I think this one we have subject, yes, yeah, subject enum to string. So that's going to be student.grades. Right here we need the index number, okay, because well, this grades will be an array. Right then we're going to have subject. Yeah, right then we can just have the colon like this. Um, and then we just have the same, but this is going to be score. Uh, yes, yeah, score enum to string. Uh, all right, and then this is going to be. Yeah, student.grades, right, again, it's going to be n and then dot score. 
Right, so let me just see if this works here. Um, okay, yeah, that, that seemed to fix it. Uh, yeah, again, I'm not really sure what that layout is. Uh, yeah, the layout issue is with that. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm not, I think that should work. So let's just give it a go. All right, and we'll see if there's any mistakes. All right, and I, I think, yeah, okay, so here we have this new line. All right, so it should be fine. Um, and let's have, right, let's have here, Yes, that's time seven. Um, right, let's say I know grades four, and then just you know the student. So this can then be student dot name. Um, yeah, and uh, let's just have this. Right. Okay. Yeah. So please enter your password. So this is I guess Tim one two three. And yeah. Okay. So we see this works. All right. So now let's just try you know all of these kind of else right just to check these are working. So the first one, well, the password, I mean, let's try, you know, Sam123, right? So th this is wrong. Um, yeah, okay, so we get invalid password. Uh, now let's say we try this, so Tim and Tim. So here, it, well, this is not gonna be a student, right? So this one here should be incorrect because now, well, now this student.roll, uh, this is gonna be, right, this is gonna be two, right? So teacher is gonna be number two. Um, whereas of course student, this is gonna be one. So here it's going to say, well, basically two is, uh, well, yeah, two is not going to be equal to one. All right, so then it's going to go, yeah, to this one. Um, yeah, okay, so Tim is not a student, hence they have no grades. Right, and then let's try, so this one. So, right, I think this is just uh, if we go Sam. Uh, and we may, maybe Sam, right, so yeah, maybe Sam wants to see his own grades. Um, and yeah, okay, so Sam doesn't have required permissions. Uh, all right, so, okay, all right, so I, I think that's mostly finished. I mean, let's try just one more, so change password. And uh, let's say the only person that can change the password is gonna be the head teacher. All right, so here then we can also just create another procedure. Uh, let's go, yeah, change, okay, let, let's make a capital, so uh, change password. Now, again, we wanna think uh, this is gonna take, I mean, maybe we can say, yeah, maybe like the admin, um, then we also have, you know, the person whose password we're changing. So maybe for this, we can just say, uh, yeah, maybe like change password for, yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure like what to call this really. I mean, you could call it user, but I guess user is a bit ambiguous. Uh, right, and again, I think that only needs, yeah, just those two parameters. Um, now again, you know, because we're saying change, well, that means we also need by ref, okay, because we need to update the original, um, yeah, rather than updating the copy. Right, and then, I mean, here we can just do basically what we've been doing before. So we just wanna say if, uh, then we say admin, uh, let's say role, uh, I mean, okay, let's say equals, yeah, role.headteacher. Right, uh, then let's go else, and let's go end if. Right, and then so here, let's say output, uh, and then let's say right admin dot name, and then we'll just say again just and it doesn't have required permissions or yet yeah, is not a head teacher. Right, and then so if it is valid, um, then I I guess we can just ask them to yeah. I mean right, honestly, I'm just going to copy this really. Uh, so maybe please enter your new password. And. Yeah, okay. Or I right, so let well let's say please enter new password and then four because I guess this is the admin changing the password for someone else. Right then we'll just say uh, yeah change password four and then this is the name. Um and then we here we could actually declare, you know, we could declare user input here, right? But actually, I mean we can just go change password four and then password. So yeah, this will just input, you know, directly into here. Um, so yeah, we, we wouldn't need to declare an extra variable. Right, and then let's just go output again. Uh, let's say, yeah, password changed successfully. All right, I think that's how you spell successfully. And right, let's actually, okay, so let's try this for Tim, because then what we can do is then we can try this show grades and 
Okay, so this one is admin. Um, right, and, and then we can check that, well, you know, does the new password work basically? Or yeah, has the new password been, you know, correctly updated? Um, yeah, so may maybe let's call this twice. Uh, okay, hang on, that's kind of annoying. Uh, right, so here then let's call and we'll go change password. And right, admin is going to be, uh, okay, head teacher who I've not created yet. Um, I mean, maybe say Henry, yeah, Henry the head teacher, or yeah, Harry. Right, so let's go here, Henry. Uh, this is going to be dot name. Right, Henry. And you know, actually, actually, one thing I have seen some people doing, um, you can actually have this, you know, unlimited length, right? That's also going to work. Uh, yeah, the assignment, right? You, you can also have only two, that's also fine. Um, however, yeah, for me, you know, I, I just use three like this. Uh, right, then let's go, Henry. And this can be age. Yeah, maybe the head teacher, they can be a bit older, maybe 55. Right, let's go role. And that can be role and then head teacher and Ray Henry dot password. Um, and I guess, yeah, just Henry123. Right. Now, I mean, in this change password, you know, if you wanted to make it really secure, I guess what you would probably want to do is, well, you'd want to ask the head teacher for their password. Right, and then yeah, when the head teacher has entered their password, well then you ask the head teacher, you know, to enter the new password for, for this kind of new person. Um, or well, yeah, not for the new person, but you know, the new password for the existing person. Um, and I guess that can be an extension if you want, right? So just kind of extend this so that it's also gonna ask for the head teacher's password. Um, yeah, just to, just to kind of authenticate them. Uh, right, okay, and then inside here, this is gonna be Henry. All right, so I think this should work, and I'm just, I mean, yeah, let's just comment this out because otherwise we get maybe too much stuff on the screen. Uh, right, two arguments, but got one. So okay, so here then we also need, uh, let's say Tim. Yeah, okay, and I think, right, so this one, this is this is on this show grades. So let's just try maybe, I mean, something wrong like, I don't know, yeah, Tim four five six. All right, so I mean, this is going to be wrong. Uh, yeah, so here we get like invalid password. Uh, right now we've called this change password. Uh, so let's say the new password for Tim. Well, this can be Tim four five six. Um, all right, and now and now it's going to be on this show grades again. So now it's going to say right enter well yeah enter your password. So if we try Tim four five six, and yeah okay so you see now it validates. Or um, well, I guess yeah now it authenticates. All right, because well, obviously initially this was wrong. Right then we successfully changed it. Uh, yeah, and then we just used the new password. All right, guys. So I think actually, I mean, for these, yeah. So again, for records and enums, all right. I think we've covered everything. Now, honestly, you know, these are a little difficult, um, or at least you know th this. Yeah, this example is you know quite difficult to be honest. Right there are, all, yeah, there are also simpler examples. So let's say if I just show you here enums. Um, Let's say here we just got all the months, right? Uh, so here we can just output, well, December is month, right? And then remember, this is gonna be a number. So here it's gonna say December is month 12, right? Then we can check, well, is December after January, right? And then we're just checking, well, is December greater than January? Uh, yeah, I guess that's gonna be true, uh, right? Then we can do the opposite. Well, yeah, December before January. So then we're checking, is December less than January? Uh, well, of course, this is gonna be false. Right, because in this example, you know, January is one, right, December is going to be 12. Um, and then I mean, here, this is again where we can use arithmetic, right? So we can do month.december, right, minus month.january. Uh, and I guess, yeah, that'll get that there's 11 months between December and January. Um, and then, yeah, we, we can also try this. So site launched, uh, right? So, yeah, we say the site was launched in May. And to be honest, I think actually I checked the other day. Um, the website was actually, or well, the domain was actually bought, I think the 30th of April. Um, right, and then, well then we can just use now, right, so this will get the current date. Um, and yeah, then we can extract the month, right, from the current date. So this will actually be 12. Um, because, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, so now is December, right, yeah. Uh, right, and then we can just say, well, yeah, if current month is equal to site launched, right, then it's this birthday. Um, yeah, I guess elsewhere it's not his birthday. Um, yeah, then I guess this, you know, this can also be an extension, right? But 
uh, yeah, so birthday isn't this month. Um, now, for example, we, I mean, we could also make this current month, right? This can also be type month. Um, and I mean, this should work, okay? Because while well, 12 is gonna be a valid uh, kind of enum, right? I mean, 12 is in this range one to 12. Uh, maybe it, yeah, okay. So I mean, that works also, no warning. Now, let's say we try like month zero. Well, this should give us an error. Um, yeah, okay, so count design zero to current month, right? Should be integer in the range one to 12. Right, likewise, if we try 13, of course, we should, yeah, okay, so we get the same error. All right, so this works. Uh, so right, let me just try, yeah, I think this one, the demo. Um, right, I mean, so I, I think, again, for enums and records, I mean, that yeah, that's everything. So I think now then we can just look at the sets. So this is actually something new, right, in the new syllabus, um, just for 2023. Uh, right, so in order to actually do this, right, I mean, let's start maybe just this vowels and consonants. So I, I'm just going to delete all of this. Uh, and yeah, you see quite a lot, maybe, you know, 120 lines, right, if you minus the comments. Um, right, so the, the syntax for declaring these is actually a little bit strange. So first I think we go type, um, and to be honest, right, maybe I might even forget this because, it, again, it's a new thing. Uh, right, so I guess then we say, yeah, I think then we go maybe like letters. Um, right, and that's going to be equal yeah, I think set of, uh, right, let's say set of characters, or yes, yeah, set of char, right, then we just go define, um, and right, let's say we want the vowels, so the vowels, what, like A, E, I, O, U, so yeah, well, let's say vowels, right, and then so here we can actually have in brackets uh, kind of the values in the set, um, so right, let's go A, right, okay, these are going to be characters, uh, that's going to be I, Right, then it's going to be O, uh, yeah, U, and I think I forgot E. I mean, yeah, let, let's keep them in alphabetical order. Um, right, okay, so, yeah, and, and then we just say uh, this, and then this is going to be of type letters. All right, so I, I think that's the correct syntax. Now, we can actually just output this, so if we go output vowels, um, and I mean, this should just output these, right, if it's working correctly. Uh, yeah, okay, so we see the set here. Right now, what we can also then do, uh, we can then just use these keywords, all right? So there's contains. So contains will check, well, yeah, does val contain, uh, unless, for example, say B, all right? So, I mean, this should be false. Um, yeah, okay, that's gonna be false, right? Because, well, B is not in this set. Uh, right, I mean, let's try, I mean, let's try A. Uh, and yeah, make sure it's small A. Um, yeah, and of course, right, this is gonna be true. Now, we can then also try, uh, let's try add. Um, and I mean, like, honestly, you know, B is not going to be a vowel, but yeah, let, let's say for some reason you wanted to do this. Right, and then we can just go, well, in fact, I mean, let's just output vowels again. So, I mean, here we're just adding B to this set, right, and I mean, now we should see that B should exist. Um, and yeah, okay, so we get B here like this. Uh, we can also then do remove, so let's go vowels, uh, right, let's go remove, and let's try, yeah, maybe just remove A. Um, and yeah, okay, so here you see we remove A. Now, we can also do it where, let's say, uh, we want to convert this into an array, or in, in fact, well, first, let's get the size. So let's go output, uh, right, and then in this time, we'll actually go size, not length. Um, and, and actually, yeah, I will say here, right, these functions are actually not kind of specified in the syllabus. Um, so, for example, if you go here to the pseudocode guide, right, it, I mean, basically the only thing it has for sets, it, like, it literally just has this. Um, it doesn't even tell you, like, how to check if an element is in a set. Uh, I mean, it, it also doesn't have how to add something, how to remove something. So, to be honest, you know, I don't think they would actually ask about sets. Um, or at least if they did, you know, it would just be kind of declaring like this because, I mean, they, they literally don't have any examples of how to do this in the guide. Now, I did ask them, and basically, you know, Cambridge, their response was, um, well, like, as long as you're kind of consistent, right, or as long as you're using something that seems, like, logical. So, yeah, I guess in an exam, if you did use, like, ads like this, right, then, you know, they, they would accept that because, well, obviously, that, that seems logical. Um, 
However, I mean, personally, yeah, I would suggest like not using sets in an exam. Um, I mean, unless it tells you to, right? Because, well, that, yeah, that's just not kind of defined on the syllabus, basically. Um, yeah, all, all they have is just where you kind of, uh, you yeah, have this type. And then when you define the initial values, you know, and the type of the set. Um, but yeah, any, anyway, so if we just look at this size, so again, right, this is just a function I made, right? It's not on the syllabus. Um, so if we go size of vowels, I mean, basically this is the same as length, but the reason I call it a size is because, well, basically length is usually associated with something that, ha that has an order. So if we have an array, well, an array has an order, right? So you have like, you know, index one, index two, index three. Um, however, a set doesn't really have an order, right? I mean, the, the way sets are usually implemented well, you can think of it just like a bag, and it's just like throwing things into the bag. Um, and yeah, there's not really any order. Uh, and you know, the reason there's no order is because, well, basically, I mean, the sort of index, or yeah, I mean, the position the elements go into, well, that's that's based on their hash value. Um, it's not based on you know the order that you inserted them. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I mean that, that's why it's called size, and you know I think a lot of languages they they have the same thing. So yeah, like length for kind of like order things, um, and then size for you know say sets, yeah hash sets, right things that are unordered. Uh, right anyway, so size. I mean this should just return five at this point because I guess we've added one and we've removed one, right? So there's going to be five. Um, yeah okay, and then we can also uh, we can also convert this into an array. So if we just go to Claire, uh, maybe just say, I don't know, like, you know, array, something like this. And uh, let's go, this will be an array. And right, we can then say, I mean, we could say one to five, but of course, if, for example, we remove this, right, well, now there's going to be six elements. So what we can then do, well, we can just use this uh, size function, um, right? This is going to be size of vowels. Uh, and then here, right, this is going to be of character. Uh, now what we should be able to do, right, I think we should just be able to go like this and then use this items function. Um, so we see here, right, this items, it takes a set and then it's going to return, well, it's going to return an array, basically. Um, and I mean, that array is going to be, well, of this data type. So of course, right, this is an array of, uh, this is a set of characters, right? So yeah, this, you know, also has to be a set of characters, right? This will return a set of characters. Um, so I mean, let's try vowels like this. All right, and then in order to test that, let's go four, and then we'll just loop through and just output them. Uh, let's go one, then we'll go to the length of array. Right, next then, uh, let's go output, and we'll just go n, and then just, uh, yeah, maybe like this, and then we will just say, uh, right, this is gonna be array index n. All right, so if, if I've not made a mistake, hopefully this should work, um, and not quite. Right, okay, so here. So when we get this, right, possible dead code, yeah, this ampersand or concatenation operator doesn't have any effect. Uh, well, of course, we can click here. Yeah, I'm not, I think it's basically saying this one. Um, and that's just because, well, here we forgot this ampersand. Um, and yeah, okay, so right now you see this works. All right, so I mean, this is just the simple example, you, you know, just looking at this. Uh, and then, of course, all right, we could also have. Uh, yeah, let's say a set of consonants. So let, let's try to actually do that in a loop, right? Because consonants, there's going to be a lot more. Um, I guess what, there's going to be 21, right? So we, we don't really want to manually type out all of the consonants. Um, and I mean, yeah, let, let's think like, uh, I don't know, if there's hundreds or thousands, or if, for example, it's, you know, the user inputting something. All right, so what we're actually going to do, uh, maybe let's just, yeah, I'm mean, actually, let, let's just delete this because we don't really need it. Uh, so what we will do, let's go for, uh, right, and then we're just gonna use the ASCII values. So we just wanna loop, right, from A to Z. Um, so if we think about that, well, small a is gonna be 97. Uh, and maybe, maybe let's call it C, or, I mean, yes, yeah, C for character, I guess. Uh, right, so let's say 97, and then if you remember, well, we need to plus 25. So this is gonna be 122, right? That's gonna be small z. Right, and then what we can do, uh, let's say if, um, we will say if vowels uh, has, if it, okay, not has, right, uh, contains. 
uh, right, so if files contains, um, and then this is going to be the character of C, right? So if, for example, this C is 97, well, right, you know, this is going to be 97, right? Then the character, you know, of the ASCII code 97, uh, well, that's that's just going to be right this small a. Um, so yeah, what this is saying is, well, if files contain small a, right? Uh, well, I, I guess then we can actually do nothing. Um, yeah, I mean, all right, so let, let's make it equals false, right? So this means, well, if vowels doesn't contain it, right, then it must be a consonant because, for example, we get to B, well, B is not in this vowels, right, therefore it must be a consonant. Uh, so actually, I mean, actually, let, let's, let's just write it again. So let's go cons, yeah, consonant like this. Right now here, this is just going to be empty by default um, because, yeah, we're just going to populate them. Uh, and again, this is also going to be of type letters. Now, to me, I actually find this syntax a little bit weird, you know, like, I mean, I, I don't really understand, like, why we can't just do set of chart like this. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess Cambridge, right, they, they say, well, first we have to define this type. Uh, and then we say that, well, the kind of instance of this set is then, yeah, of this type. So, yeah, we, we kind of need, like, two statements, right, just to declare one thing. Um, right, but anyway, uh, so let's say this, right, then we can have then, and let's go end if, right, and then if we say here, well, here then we just want to add it to the, uh, yeah, we just want to go consonant, well, if I, let's go consonants, right, and then we're just going to go add, uh, and then let's add chr, right, of c. So, I mean, if, yeah, if my logic is correct, um, then again, this should be, for example, b, right, so it's going to add b. Uh, then it's going to get to C, right? Well, C, uh, what well, you know, vowels, right? Contain C. Well, that's also false, right? Then it's going to add C, D. Uh, of course, then it gets to E. Well, then it's going to check, right? Vowels contains E. Well, this is going to be true. So, of course, yeah, then it's not going to do this. Um, so, I mean, let's just output this, see if it works. Uh, let's say vowels. Um, right, and then let's go output and we'll go vowels. Uh, maybe let's just have some new lines, right, just to separate. Right, let's go consonants. And, yeah, then let's just go output, and we'll go consonants. Uh, right, okay. Yeah, and no, I, I think, actually, I, I don't really need these, to be honest, um, because I think it's going to output all on one line. All right, so let's just see. Uh, right, N has not been declared. All right, that's this one, I guess. Um, in fact, actually, hang on, right, let, let's make this C, yeah, since, yeah, these are both C. Uh, okay. Alright, I'm not really sure why that doesn't work. Um, let's just try an output. Uh, I mean, let's just say, yeah, I know, well, let's try CHR, right, of C. I think, yeah, may, maybe this is the problem. Um, let's try. Yeah, okay. Uh, how about if I put brackets around this? Uh, okay. Yeah, all right. So uh, let's just close that. Well, yeah, delete that. Right, so I guess the reason I needed brackets is because, well, this contains will have higher priority. Um, yeah, I, I think maybe I might check this because I think, I mean, that's a small little bug, to be honest. Right? I think we shouldn't. Yeah, I, I think probably we shouldn't need brackets around this. All right, so I'll try and fix that. Um, but I mean, otherwise, right, you do see it's working. Uh, and you, you know, to be honest, right, sets, they're a new feature. Yeah, they're not really in the syllabus that much. Um, so I think these are not that important, really. Uh, but anyway, I mean, let, let's just try one more example. So let's say we want to make a lottery program and the player has to choose six numbers, right, in the range one to 50. And then for it, let's say they get three correct. Well, if they get three correct, then I don't know, maybe they win like a thousand. And yeah, that can be a thousand of, you know, whatever currency. Uh, whereas if they, you know, if they get six correct, well, maybe they win, you know, a million or a hundred million. Um, yeah, or, you know, how, yeah, however much you want. All right. So if you think about this right here, basically we're going to need two sets. So one set would be for the correct answers, and then one set would be for the user answers. So if we just try again, let's go type. Uh, I mean, let's, let's just call this numbers, I guess. 
Um, and then this one is going to be, right, this is going to be a set of integer. Right, and then let's go here, let's go define. Uh, let's say maybe, yeah, let's say like correct answers. Um, right, and then we're going to go, yeah, this is of type numbers. Right, then I'm just going to copy this. Um, to be honest, I've, I've actually not tried this. Like, I'm not sure if this is going to work. You know, probably not, to be honest. Uh, yeah, let's say user answers. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, so we, we get a syntax error here. Um, so I mean, I mean, let, let's just do it on two different lines. Uh, right, so yeah, this should be user answer, or yeah, maybe user answers. Right, and then what we want to do, so, I mean, and the thing is, right, these numbers have to be unique. So actually, I forgot to mention that, right, but that, that's one advantage of a set. Uh, with a set, basically, it's only going to have one of, you know, any particular value. So, uh, I mean, well, let, let's just try here. So let's go, like, correct. Yeah, okay, that's also annoying. It's not suggesting that. Uh, let's go correct answers, add five, and then, you know, we'll just paste this a load of times. Right, and then let's just go output, and let's see. Uh, yeah, correct answers, right? And you'll see this will only have one five. Um, yeah, okay, so we only get one five like this. All right, because, well, what you can think is basically a set, I mean, the way it's implemented, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just using the hash value. So if you get two things that hash to the same value, well then, you know, it's going to just overwrite the original data um, because, yeah, it's going to realize, you know, there's something there already. Um, so, yeah, it's just not going to add it again, basically. So, uh, I mean, this this can be useful. Let's say, for example, uh, you have a program and you want to ensure that, uh, let's say, people's usernames would be unique right? or people's email addresses would be unique. So you could define a set of, you know, usernames, email addresses. Um, and then, for example, you just do something like this, right? So you'd say if, uh, and then you say like, uh, say if usernames, uh, yeah, if usernames contains, and then the new username, and then what well, if it does contain that, then you just output an error message um, saying, yeah, username already exists. You know, please choose a different username. Um, but yeah, I mean, so if we look so here, right, this will be useful for uh, kind of generating the six numbers because we won't have to worry about checking if the number already exists, right? That, that's just like a kind of inherent property of sets. So what we can then do, we can just say while, uh, and let's say while the size of correct answers, uh, yeah, and all, all we could just do repeat until, so actually let's say repeat, uh, let's say until, and this will be until the size equals six. Um, and then what we're going to do is, I mean, we could make a variable, but actually I think here we can do it all on one line. So let's go correct answers, uh, then let's go add. All right, then here what we can do, uh, this will be an int, all right, let's go rand. And we want to generate a random number between one and 50, all right, so not zero. So what we can do, we can set this to 50, but the problem is this will be, well, zero until, you know, 49, right? Because, uh, yeah, we're just basically flooring, right? We're doing this int. Um, so what, what we then want to do, well, then we just want to go plus one like this, right? Because uh, you think here again, well, this, this will get like zero. I mean, yeah, basically this will get zero until, uh, you know, sort of 49.99999, um, right? Then if we just add one to this, well, then of course it will go, you know, one until, uh, yeah, until 50, um, yeah, until 50.9, right? And then of course, when we get the integer value, well, the integer value then just cuts off the decimal, all right? So that, that's going to be in the range 1 to 50. All right, now, I do see sometimes people make uh, kind of, yeah, quite an easy mistake to make. Uh, they would actually put the plus 1 in here. But the problem with this, well, this will then generate, uh, let's say, 0 until, you know, sort of 50.999, right? So that, that's going to do, uh, yeah, basically this, right? But then the problem is, well, when you then take the int, Right, when, when you take the int of that, well, now you've got 0 to 50, right? whereas we actually wanted 1 to 50. Um, so, yeah, that, that's why this plus 1 has to be outside like this. Um, all right, but I think that should just work. And, again, we can just test that uh, simply just by outputting the correct answers. And, yeah, hopefully this should 
Uh, yeah, okay, so we get six numbers, right? And, and you see, right, none of them are going to be repeated. And of course, you know, if we run it each time, right, we get different numbers. Right, so let's say here then, um, I mean, we, we can honestly just do the same thing, right? Just asking the user to input. So let's just go repeat. And yeah, let's say until, right? And I mean, you, you know, you could also do a for loop, like four, one to six. Um, but I mean, yeah, I think a repeat until is easier in many ways. So again, let's go size. This will be user answers. Uh, run, yeah, until that equals six. Um, and then what we can do, let's say output, right? This would be like, please enter, yeah, number. Right, so, and so yeah, we wanna say like, please enter number one, please enter number two. So again, we could make another variable to, you know, store this, right? Or we could actually just do the size of user answers. Um, and then actually here we do need to go plus one. All right, because if you think, well, this size will be zero, right? But, you know, you know when it's zero, well, we want to say, yeah, that's kind of considered number one, basically. Um, because, yeah, that, well, this is kind of assuming if they're correct. Right, so then what we can do, um, I think here, I mean, here we can't do input directly, right? So we will actually need to declare a variable. So let's say user input, right? That's going to be an integer. Uh, then we say... Uh, yeah, okay, hang on. I mean, like, maybe let's just, you know, we, we could declare it here, right? I mean, we could also declare it outside if we, if we want. Um, and, you, you know, the thing with declaring outside, well, it's only going to be declared one time. Uh, so, yeah, I think let's just declare it outside. Right then, so what we can then do, uh, yeah, let's go input. And we want to input this into the user input. Um, and then we can just say, uh, right, so we want to go user answers and then just add, right, and then just add the user input. Right, so I think this should just work. Um, and then let's just go output and we'll just test it. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's also just output the correct answers as well. Uh, right, so please enter number one. I mean, let's try five. Um, okay, so yeah, that works. Right, let's try five again. So if we try five again, what well, it should still say two. Um, because yeah, five wouldn't have been added. Um, you, you know, the size is still going to be one, basically. Uh, yeah, okay, so you see it's, it right, still says two. Um, let's try maybe, I don't know, 14, 19, 20, 25, and yeah, I don't know, like 39. Um, and yeah, okay, so we, we get this here. Uh, now, let's say we also want to check, right, if the user's input is in this range one to 50. So, I mean, what we can do, uh, maybe let's just go in here and write, I mean, this can also be inside a while loop or, you know, repeat until. Um, so I think, yeah, let's just go repeat until. Yeah, okay. Right, let's just indent this a little bit. And what we want to say is, uh, well, user input. Right, then this should be greater than, right, greater than or equal to one, right, and also user input. And this should be what less than or equal to 50. Yeah, and I think that should work. Uh, so let's try like 90. Yeah, okay, 90 doesn't work. Let's try zero. All right, yeah, that doesn't work. Um, yeah, okay, and then, uh, yeah, so I, I think this works. Right, so then what we just want to do, well, we just want to, you know, check how many they got correct. Um, so, I mean, okay, I mean, let, let's keep these because then we can just easily check. Right, so what we're going to do, um, I mean, basically we need a way to kind of loop through, right? So I think what we can do, we can just loop through this user answers and then just check, uh, yeah, if, well, if, you know, uh, basically if each user answer is inside the correct answers, right? So remember then we can also just, uh, yeah, we can also convert this to an array, right, using the items. So let's go declare, miss, uh, call it maybe user answer array or something. Yeah, and then user answer array. Uh, right, that's going to be an array. That is going to be one until, well, again, we could say six. You know, we could say the size of the user answers. Um, because I guess, you know, if suddenly we change the lottery where we want like 10 numbers, well, then if we do this again, you know, when this user answer size updates, you know, of course, right, this, uh, this array size is also going to update. Or the array dimensions, right, that's going to be integer. Um, 
Right, then what we can then do, uh, user answers array, and we're just going to assign that with the items, uh, and that's going to be user answers. Right, then we can just loop. So let's, I mean, let, let's also declare a count, right, for how many they got correct. Uh, so let's say correct count, right, that's going to be integer. Uh, yeah, this we can just assign to zero, um, although it will be zero by default. Right, so here we're just going to go one, uh, and then let's try here, let's go the length of user answers array. Right, and then so here we just check, so let's go if, uh, and then we say if, right, the user, uh, right, this is going to be the correct answers, then this is contains, right, then it's going to be the user answer array index n, right, so this is just, you know, the current, uh, yeah, the current value that we're looping through. Right, so if it contains this, well then we just say the correct count. Uh, right, basically that's just going to increment. Right, and then let's go end if. Right, then I think this should be yeah, this should be correct. Now, in order to calculate how much money they win, um, I mean we could use a case statement, we could use an if statement. Right, I'm actually going to do it a little bit differently. So I'm just going to say declare, and this will be an array, maybe like win, uh, yeah, I know like winnings array. Right, and that is going to be uh, right an array, and again, this can be one until the length of the user answers, um, because I, I guess right if there's six answers, well that means that they can get between sort of well zero and five, right? Or okay, okay sorry, yeah, one and six. Um, yeah, I was I was thinking yeah different language. Um, yeah, so that they can get between one and six numbers correct. Uh, okay, okay, no, sorry, right? They can get between zero and six numbers correct. Right, so that's why we actually have to go plus one. Uh, right, and then what we can then do, uh, let's see the winnings array. Now, I mean, honestly, right, we you know we can just assign it like this, right? Or yeah, let's do it how Cambridge prefers. Uh, I guess if they get zero, well, let's just say yeah, they win zero. Right, let's just copy this a few times. Right, I think maybe that's enough. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, okay. Right, so let, let's say if they get one, I mean, maybe they just win five, right? Not very much. Uh, maybe they win 20, maybe 100. Uh, what's that? Maybe like 50,000. Right, and then may, maybe here they win a million. Well, I think that's, yeah, okay, that's too many zeros. Um, or in fact, I mean, yeah, let, let's make it better because otherwise that's not a very good competition, to be honest. Um, yeah, they may be 50. All right, so I, I think this is fine. And then what we just want to do, well, we can then just say output. Uh, let's say, yeah, you got, and then this will be, you know, you got two correct, you know, you won 50 or something. Uh, right, so this should be you got, and then and the correct count. Right, then we say correct. Uh, right, let's say you won. And then this will just be, uh, right, that's going to be and, and then this is the winnings array, right, and then we need to think, so this is going to be, I mean, th this should just be the correct count, because if they got zero correct, well, then winnings array zero, just zero, right, if they got six correct, well, winnings array six, um, yeah, so I think this should work, All right, so let's, yeah, let's just test this, um, and here we can also output this just to see, All right, so let, let's give it a go. Uh, right, expected of. Okay, so here, yeah, I forgot the right of, and then that's going to be integer. Uh, right, okay, so I'm going to wait, line 50. Okay, I mean, I think, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, so that, that's just a small little bug. Right, okay, so here then, um, and I mean, actually, right, this, I mean, this is just a warning, right? It's not a fatal error. Um, and I mean, I do say possible because, again, you know, there are situations where, like, the program will kind of, uh, yeah, misinterpret um, or kind of, yeah, incorrectly analyze the code, basically. Um, so, yeah, that, that's not going to be a fatal error. Like, I mean, it, yeah, uh, like, it, it will still work. Right, so here, let's, I mean, let's try random numbers, maybe five, six, seven, right, eight, nine, ten. And right, zero out of bounds. Uh, okay, yeah. See, th this is where I'm getting confused between you know different languages. Um, right in pseudocode, obviously we're we're starting at one here. 
now I mean if we want to you know honestly right we, we could just start this at zero um, and then we would just set this to be six right I mean th this would work how yeah I mean however if you do want to do it you know starting at one I guess you'd have to go plus one here right this would then have to be like this um, and then I guess here we just go correct count plus one um, although again you know this is a little bit weird because all right there we go um, this is a little bit weird because well here it's saying you know correct is six but then we're actually getting it from you know index seven um, but I mean, yeah that, that should work hopefully right so let's try like four uh, yeah three six eight two one and right again okay just zero uh, let's actually try and make yeah we'll try and make this smaller like 15 or, or well may, maybe just 10 um, yeah okay well, in fact well, actually let yeah let's make it six right so I mean this should mean we're gonna win yeah we're gonna win this you know million uh, right and then also yeah I guess I don't need to check I don't need to change that that's fine so right, let's try one two three four five six and yeah okay so here we see right you got six correct and you won yeah 10 million um, all right guys so I think I mean in this class right that's everything so just a quick recap uh, well we've looked at records so records I mean you can well if you're familiar with databases you know you can think of this kind of like a you know relation in a database right just a table in a database where again each relation you're going to have you know these different attributes um, now there is something some people get confused about right we've not looked at this yet um, but I mean we, uh, we we yeah we will also look at classes right in a future well in a future class right future lesson now the difference between a record and a class right a record can only have data so you like you can't have functions you can't have procedures um, right well so you can't have modules right whereas a class well this can also have data right so variables um, now in a class right you'd actually call that an attribute right so uh, yeah attributes would be you know the variables um, however a class can also have methods right so they would be well functions procedures uh, or I guess Cambridge right they also call them modules uh, yeah so again the difference what well, a record only has data right so just your yeah, attributes variables um, whereas a class well this can have yeah sort of you know attributes right and methods um, so yeah, I mean class is just kind of uh, well an extension basically uh, Yeah, just more more features uh, Right, I mean in enum well like we saw right. I mean it literally has the word num um, And yeah, let's just remove that uh, So, you know num right just number because right each of these is going to be assigned a number um, Now that obviously means we can check well are they equal? You know is it greater than less than not equal? Uh, we, we also saw we could do addition so checking for example, uh, maybe the current month or we could do, I don't know, like, you know, say December, like maybe Christmas. Um, so, yeah, we could do like sort of December minus the current month. And, you know, that would tell us how many months until the end of the year, for example. Um, yeah, the other advantage as well, again, it's going to be a whitelist. So what we mean when we say a whitelist, well, this will be a list of allowed values. Now, in contrast, a blacklist, well, a blacklist will be a list of disallowed values. Um, so for example a blacklist often this could be uh, maybe for example forbidden words so you might have a website where for example you wouldn't want users uh, to be you know using certain words in their usernames now I mean some of these words you know could just be like admin because if a user signs up with the name admin well maybe people might think that you know that user is the actual admin right which is uh, kind of yeah they, they could be impersonating someone um, you know obviously blacklist well you can also think uh, kind of like yeah obscenities right so swear words you know offensive words um, yeah just a list of words that you wouldn't want all right whereas an enum well this is going to be a white list so basically a, a, well a list of allowed values uh, right and then finally well we just saw a set so I think probably three key features right one is well they're going to be fast to sort of add remove and uh, to check if it contains an element and the reason it's going to be fast is because well if we were using an array right either we have to sort the array um, you know uh, well I mean so well we, we could use bubble sort insertion sort 
uh, you know, for Cambridge, right? Although like real programming languages will use, you know, uh, kind of much faster sorting methods than that. Um, so yeah, I mean, if it's sorted, well, then we can use like binary search, okay, on an array. So that's fine. But the problem is, you know, when you add a new element to a sorted array, well, then you have to resort it again, All right? So you know, for an array, that that's going to be quite slow. Uh, in order to check, you know, if the element exists. Um, whereas if, for example, we look at a set, well, actually, right, if you're familiar with the time complexity, right, then actually just O of one, right, so this means it's constant. Um, so in order to well, add, remove, or check if an element exists, right, it's just gonna be O of one time complexity. Uh, whereas we think even, for example, uh, let's say binary search, well, binary search is gonna be, you know, log n, um, or, well, you know, in particular, right, log base two of n like this. So yeah, I mean, th this one's going to be like extremely fast. Um, right, I mean, the, the other advantage, uh, again, it's going to ensure uniqueness by, by default. So if you have a situation where, you know, values have to be unique, well, rather than using an array and having to do, you know, some sort of search, right, to check if the element already exists, well, you, you know, you can just use a set, right, and then you can just like add things and you know it's not going to be added. Um, or yeah, it's not going to add a duplicate basically, right? It's only going to have one of them. Um, and then I guess, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I guess that's really the two advantages of sets. Um, yeah, so I'm um, just the, just those features, right? Right, guys. So I think I mean for this class, uh, yeah, I think we've covered everything. Um, now next class probably we'll look at files, and then after files probably we'll look at classes. All right, and then I think after that, yeah, we've probably finished about the whole syllabus. Um, so yeah, may maybe just two more classes. All right, and then after that, uh, well, if anyone has any requests, maybe you know specific questions or maybe exam questions, um, then yeah, I, I can try to you know address those. All right, although I mean hopefully, yeah, I mean hopefully like maybe other teachers, all right, they might also use this uh, this website, um, and yeah, of course th then they can you know demonstrate their own solutions. Um, Alright, so yes, yeah, so hope to see you in the next video.